All right, guys, so I'm here with my friend Chad. Hi, gang. He's got this super beautiful truck that I've been dying to ask him about. It's a, uh, well, you know what, let's have him talk about it. It is kind of a mutt. It's uh, licensed as a 1973 Ford F-350, but it's got the 1978, 79 uh, front end on it, so the square headlights and that square uh, grill. It's also got a 78, 79 bed on it, so the uh, fuel doors are on the bed instead of just the caps being on the outside of the bed. So do fuel doors are an addition. But huh. if, if you notice on the, uh, yeah, if you look around, the older trucks will just have the cap right on the bed side. Okay, yeah, I didn't, I actually didn't know that. You see an old truck cruising <laughs> by, fuel cap, no fuel door. Yeah, I actually didn't even think about that. No box Broncos went that way too. Really? I think it was 77 was the only year with a fuel door. Huh. So. All right, well, let's talk about the, the real, real meat here is what he's got under the hood. Do you mind popping the hood for us? Yeah, it might get much easier with the fuel cap there. <laughs> Even yeah, oh, you guys it's got a secret combination. <laughs> <laughs> write that down. Write that down. Yep. <laughs> so what have we got here? That is a 24 valve Cummins and diesel engine, inline six. Um, it's out of the year 2000 Dodge. And I was talking with Chad before, and he mentioned that this is actually on a. Dodge chassis. Can you tell me about that a little bit? Yes, all right. So it is a Dodge chassis, year 2000 Dodge chassis. That's the engine. It's uh, so I had the I had the old Ford, and I wanted to put a Cummins in it, and then decided I'd put uh, I'd just do a body swap because of the axles on the old Ford it was a Dana 44 in the front and a Dana 60 in the rear, and the Dodge had Dana 60 in the front, Dana 80 in the rear, and come with uh, just upgraded technology, modernized technology, disc brakes, things of that nature, and the heavier axles, and a chassis built for that big engine. So I decided to do a body swap and just put the Ford body on the Dodge chassis. Yeah, can, can you tell me about the complications that you ran into with uh, putting, because I mean, it feels like this, this, um, this body wouldn't really fit onto a chassis that well. <laughs> Yeah, obviously the body mounts didn't line up, so none of the body line things lined up, but <laughs> it was kind of surprising the things that did line up um, and work, just firewalls and things like that were real similar, although I did alter it some, but uh, you can kind of see the farm boy welded this on and that, and then the old mounts, kind of the old Dodge mounts still sticking out a little bit, but I okay. chopped it off and, yeah, yeah. and just kind of done my own thing and mounted the cab there. So you were saying that the crew cab is the same length as the extended cab, right? As far as wheelbase? Yeah. So it was real similar. Um, well, <laughs> there's what I did. So the Dodge was a super cab or extra cab long bed. This was originally a, a super cab long bed. And then uh, ex my family expanding with the kids um, it needed, well, it would have been more convenient to be a crew cab. So I found the crew cab and it's the same chassis I had a super cab, uh, Ford on. So the first build was a super cab on the Dodge chassis, super cab Ford. And then I changed it to a crew cab Ford and the wheelbase with the super cab Ford and the super cab Dodge, I think was three quarters inch difference. So. Looking at it, I couldn't tell the difference after I'd done the build. Yeah, that's really so anyways, small. This is the same chassis that Super Cab was, but I did the Crew Cab. Um, but my problem was the wheelbase, right? That the, the wheelbase totally changed. Eight foot bed was too long, <laughs> six and a half foot bed was too short. <laughs> so I had to make my own bed. So that is. A, so this is a fully custom bed? That's a custom length bed. Oh. So that bed is about a seven foot bed. Wow. So I took the long, the long bed I did have and I cut 11 inches out of it and there's a seam right here and you can almost see it inside the bed going across there is kind of remnants of it. That's wow you hid that really well. Yeah, can you yeah. see it at all underneath? I, the most I've seen you could probably see it back here. I would imagine. 
Oh, I've hit it pretty good there too. Not very well. Excellent job. <laughs> yeah, you can kind of see a weld right there by the fuel. Still, that's that's impressive. Still. I didn't know that you um, chopped the bed, so it's a it's a mutt of a bed as well. Yeah, whole truck's a mutt. <laughs> <laughs> so here's here's the that's the portion that you cut the out. Portion I cut out to make that bed the length I needed it, so the wheelbase would work. So what transmission do you have in here? It's the five speed, which is the NV forty five hundred. Just what came in the straight Dodge. out of the Dodge. Yep, out of the Dodge. So the five speed manual, which is fun. So you took the engine, the transmission, and both axles from the previous oh, truck? Frame. The yeah. Frame, the frame's out of the Dodge also. Okay. So it, the frame, the axles, uh, engine, transmission, transfer case for the four wheel drive. Uh, when I did the swap, the, the intercooler wasn't gonna fit where the engine sat on the Dodge frame. Mm -hmm. So I had to tear it all down and move the end motor mounts on the frame back six inches or so, roughly uh, six inches, what's in my head. Yeah. Move them back six <laughs> inches and then put the engine in so the intercooler would fit in front of the radiator. Okay, so. Right behind the grill in this body, so. So it's safe to say really the only thing for it on this truck is the cab and the bed? The, yeah, the body lines, the body. The cab and the hood and the grill. And it says Ford, <laughs> but it's all Dodge. <laughs> Which is funny because back in the day, Ford used Cummins in some of their engines. Yeah, and they're heavier duty, the one ton trucks, or well, the two ton trucks, the ton and a half, so the, yeah, the medium duty. So really, you're just continuing the Ford legacy how it should have been, <laughs> arguably. <laughs> so have you done anything with the engine, like any mods, any? The, yeah, I've, I've upgraded it, just mild tune, I'd call it. It's got a super chips in it, because it is the 24 valve. Um, so the super chips is kind of a mild tune. I've done a boost elbow, which kind of tricked the wastegate to not dump in the boost, so it'll build a little bit more boost. Um, oh, and I put marine injectors in it, but they're Bosch injectors, so they're they're uh, the same brand that came out of it. But they're 40 horse plus 40 horse injectors, but they're Bosch, so they're the good brand name. So, have, if you were to guess, what kind of power do you think this is putting down? I'd guess around 300 horse. Just, what about torque? If I pencil it out, it's about 300. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll give it I'd a... be curious to put it on the dyno. Yeah, yeah. See. I would be too. I, I'd probably say but, like 600-ish, maybe torque, I, maybe yeah, 700. I can't remember what the stock numbers are on that engine. I'm thinking it's around 200, 215. I think you're right, yeah. And then uh, the super chips is like 70 horse. The 40 horse injectors, um, I mean, you got that intake there, the, the boost elbow, you know, trick the boost, the wastegate. Hmm. Um, so I'm guessing around 300 horse. It pencils out to more than 300. <laughs> I'd be surprised if it's, yeah. you know, I'd, I'd be surprised if it's even at 300. Well, let's take a look at the interior. So where are these seats from? These seats are out of uh, 2001 Ford Super Duty, uh, an extra cab. Oh, really? Yeah, like a pick and pull type place. Honestly, I was, when I was in here, I was thinking they were the, like one of the first gen Dodge seats. Oh, they're Ford seats actually. Hmm. So, yeah, super duty seats. They look pretty similar. Yeah, and then you'll notice the steering wheel. It has a ram. That's where the horn's at. Yeah, yeah, so I was gonna ask you about that too. Did you just pull the full steering column yep, out of it too? Steering column and all, that's all Dodge. Gauge clusters, Dodge, headlight switch. Um, but then I've incorporated the heater is actually the Ford controls over there. So does the heater and the AC work on this? No air conditioner. No air conditioner. Uh, the, the Dodge had air conditioner, um, but when I moved that engine back, the whatever that's called, the condensing pump, mm -hmm. AC pump, yeah, uh, crossover member on the frame, it run right into it. Mm. So I pulled the pump off. In hindsight, what I do is notch that frame and make that pump work, and I would have fitted this up with AC. But so your AC is, what do they say? Oh, right here. Uh, <laughs> what's the Wind saying? Windows. It's a, a two down and 60 or something. I can't remember what they say. Yeah. For what, go down the freeway? Yeah. Yeah, four windows down, yeah, wind, four windows down 60 miles an hour is AC on yeah, this. Yeah, that's AC. Oh, that's funny. So I, I mainly drive the truck in the spring 
when it's you know relatively cooler mm -hmm. and in the fall when it's relatively cooler so you never drive it in the winter i don't drive it in the winter or much. try not to yeah, drive it in, in the, the winter salty roads you know the snowy salty Smart. roads and i don't drive it in the heat of the summer due to the fact it doesn't have air conditioning <laughs> so. so right now it's it's prime perfect time to drive it, yeah. yep yep <clears throat> dang that's funny i didn't know it didn't have ac but i mean that's kind of what you get a lot of the time when you do engine Project. swaps and yeah hindsight i would have taken the effort and made made it have ac but it is what it is and i'm happy with it yeah so yeah i mean sacrifice i think you did a great job no well, thank you so is it it's a straight piped back to these stacks right uh it's four inch and then i've got a like a 24 inch magna flow straight through muffler and then it, yeah up to them it goes to five inch and then to those eight inch stacks eight inch stacks huh do you get a lot of people saying things about that yeah uh my one buddy calls it the traeger <laughs> <laughs> rolling coal yeah uh i personally i i love it i it gives you that old that old trucker look like the for like the peterbilts and stuff yeah well, i remember growing up i always Vision myself having a diesel truck with stacks, mm -hmm. but in my head it was a dually and little dinky stacks, and here I am with this big Ford and big old fat stacks. Yeah, that's kind of how I am too. I think, I think a, a a dually with big stacks. Oh man, you just can't beat that look. But yeah. honestly, I think you kind of killed it with this. This looks great. So how like what kind of reactions do you get from this truck? So the truck draws a lot of emotions out of people. Yeah. Um, a lot of it's good, some of it's bad. <laughs> but uh, uh, I'll pass other diesel trucks in town or whatever, and they'll show me they can blow smoke. Like, oh, oh, yeah. So I get a lot of that, people blowing smoke out of their trucks. Um, people will stop me and just want to appreciate it and look at it. Um, yeah, when we were out camping, that guy stopped. <laughs> He's like, man, I had an old crew cab back in the 70s, you know, and he... It just brought memories back to him because he had a crew cab, which not a lot of people had them because they're kind of rare. Yeah. On um, this area, man, a crew cab, uh, and a 70s era crew cab is as popular, was as popular back then as today a standard cab truck is, you know? I mean, you'll see them here and there, but they're mostly work trucks if it's a standard cab, and a crew cab back then was a work truck. Yeah. More or less. So would you say you get more positive feedback than negative? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it does trigger some some weird emotions out of people. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. We we were just talking about the stacks and how he sometimes gets flack for the stacks, and you know, I think especially with a truck like this, it's older and custom. I think it, it works great. Yeah, one one guy uh, totally mocked the truck and then come back and said, you know what? I actually love the restoration. <laughs> I just hate the modifications. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's, I guess, your opinion, and <laughs> yep. everybody has one, so. Yep. Well, should we go for a drive? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. He gave you a look, that's for sure.
Hey guys. So I'm sitting here editing the video and I realized that I didn't record any kind of outro when I was recording the truck. So I just mostly want to say a huge thank you to Chad for letting me talk to him about his truck and him sharing with me the story of building it, what it was and how it is now. Uh, I just want to say a huge thank you to him. Uh, he also has a YouTube channel and it's called Rally with Rolly where he does a bunch of uh, rides on his dirt bike. It's really cool, he goes on these long trips, so I suggest you guys check him out if you like off-road stuff. But I just want to say thank you to everybody watching. I had a really good time making this video. Me and Chad had a great time. And I will see you guys in the next video.